dudes and chicks and neither of those girls don't apply to you. Welcome to Ray Frost. Hi, my name is Katie. Today, I am going to be popping this palette cherry. Oh, I'm not sure what that was. This is the Vamp by Bella Beauté Bar. I obviously love everything about it. I love the color story. There are some colors in this. This color right here is fucking shocking. It is shockingly beautiful. It looks red in the palette, but it's actually like shifts to a lavender. It's so fucking pretty. It's like hollow. I don't know. I'm not gonna do the swatches, but I will fucking show you this shit. Here, let me see if I can get it like super red. There's the super red and there's the violet. You can totally see it. It's like so beautiful. Oh my God, it just fucking, uh, uh. So anyways, if you guys are interested in seeing how I got this look or here are my final thoughts on this palette, or if you just like to watch, then hang out. For those of you who don't know, Blend Bunny was having like an amazing sale on their brushes and I have never wanted the Blend Bunny brushes because the way that Blend Bunny used to do her makeup when she was an Instagrammer mainly, it's not really the same style as how I do my makeup and so when I would look at the brushes they looked like the style of brushes that actually kind of cater to that style of makeup. So I've always been interested in them but I've never really pulled the trigger on them because I didn't think they were going to match my style and so they were only $12. And so I ordered a set and they're actually really like they look like they're gonna be really good So I'm excited. I mean everybody loves them and also I don't really do my makeup the same as a lot of people That like them. So I didn't know if I was gonna like them and I actually they look like I am gonna like them So I'm excited to use I'm gonna use the blend bunny brushes The main color that I really want to like accent is this color immortality so I'm gonna start with the biggest brush and I'm gonna go into Immortality because any color that I'm gonna use to deepen up this color is going to, it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna change the, I always do that. I start a sentence, then I start blending and then I pause. And then when I'm editing, I have to cut out these little tiny bits that take me forever. It's not gonna make any difference in the color because it's not any color that I'm gonna to use to deepen this up isn't gonna be changed by going over the top. However, the color might be changed building up if I blend it out, go 50% on and 50% off. So like this red might be changed if I was to use black, say, to deepen up my outer V. If I was gonna use black and then go 50% on with this red, it would kind of change the color of this red. And I want this to be like really bright and stay like vibrant because it's almost like a neon-y looking red in the in the pan. It's, it's pretty pink on the eye, which you guys know I love a pink red. Or maybe you don't know. Hi, I'm Katie. I love pink red. I love pink anything. So I'm using the biggest brush to do this. What is it? Not like I'm gonna be able to see it. The B5. Luckily, I have a good friend named Tanya to keep me posted because she texted me while I was at the movies with my kiddo and was like, dude, the Blend Barney brushes are on sale for 12 bucks. It's a steal of a deal. And I was like, send, send it. Just blending out that outer to get rid of any hard lines. See, this is where it's getting into, like it's the, these three brushes are kind of not really necessarily my jam. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these brushes. So I'm just gonna do what I want to. Yeah, I'm gonna go actually a little bit higher with this. I'm just really blending it out. I'm not going a lot higher with it. I'm just kind of getting that gradient. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm gonna go in with this. I'm gonna go into Drained. I really like the way that this palette is set up. So it's like perfect. The layout to me is perfection. It's like not too organized, but it's not like so disorganized. It's like the blues are right here and it kind of like waves into the purples and then the reds are at the top so it's like kind of a little bit of a country road but not like it's not so fucking spelled out that it tells it's telling me what to do i don't like that i don't like being told what to do by palettes this is a pretty color well i don't know what it looks like in regular but over the top of that red it's super pretty and it builds nicely so that's great dude this is Mm. 
Nice. That looks grand, bro. Man, that's a super pretty start. The other thing that I like is that this palette makes references to Twilight, Vampire Diaries, and The Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. So I'll, I can talk a little bit about this. I've talked about it before, but so I used to be a huge vampire snob and like any vampires that weren't Anne Rice vampires were like, I was like, that's not real. That's not how real vampires are. And, and like anything that was like even strayed away from the Anne Rice vampires was like not, didn't fucking cut it for me because the Anne Rice vampires are seriously the best fucking vampires. And I was like a huge vampire snob until, well, for one, what happened was my husband who was sitting in prison called me up one night and he was like, dude, we just watched this movie called Twilight and you should watch it. He goes, I think you'd really like it. Now at the time, him and I didn't know each other as well as I thought. And at one point he actually said to me, he was like, babe, I'm kind of, I feel like you like Lestat more than you like me. I was like, oh, don't worry, babe. He's not a threat to you. But if Lestat came right now, he's a threat to any fucking buddy, trust. And so I was like, I watched Twilight and then like I needed to know what happened next. So I went and I read all the Twilights like back to back as many of us have. At that point, I was like, well, fuck. So here's the bottom line about being a vampire snob to me. I read the Vampire Chronicles when I was like 26. That was like, you know, 20 fucking years ago, right? And so if I was to remain in that position where like I would never accept any other sort of vampire story besides the Anne Rice vampires, then that means I don't get to ever read or watch another vampire book or movie ever again, period, for all eternity. So I feel like that's actually worse, a worse fate than accepting fucking deer eating fucking vampires. So like over time I have grown to accept Twilight. It was really Twilight that like made me like be a little bit more tolerant because obviously for obvious reasons a lot of people think that the Twilight vampires are the fucking worst which that's cool. I get it. I agree. You know what I mean? It's like they are very PG, right? So it's cool whatever, to each their own. I personally, so then at that point, like I'll fucking watch any fucking trash, right? So then I like watched Vampire Diaries. And at that point, you know, I tried to watch uh, Buffy, like my mom was really into Buffy. And so I tried Buffy and couldn't fucking get down with it because I was too much of a vampire snob. I tried to get down with True Blood at a certain point and couldn't fucking get down with it because it was too fucking cheesy. And like, so all these vampires that have all these weaknesses, that's not even real. That's not rooted in any kind of reality. The only weakness that vampires have is the sun. And so that's vamp, that's Anne Rice shit, right? Like, and honestly, Lestat is such a vamp, fucking badass vampire that he like actually flew into the sun one time to try and kill himself and couldn't do it because he drank the oldest blood, right? So if you haven't read the books, I'm sure most of you have at least seen Queen of the Damned. And, it, and a lot of you have seen Interview with a Vampire, but Interview with a Vampire doesn't really go necessarily with the Vampire Chronicles because the Interview with a Vampire is from the perspective of Louis, and Louis is a fucking crybaby bitch. In my personal opinion, I'm not Louis shaming, I'm just saying he is a little bit of a crybaby. He's like, oh, I don't want to be a vampire. Well, fucking Lestat didn't want to be a vampire either. He just like had learned to accept it over like years and years, right? And years and years and years and years and years and years. Fast forward. Okay, so at that point, then I was able to like tolerate 28 Days of Night, Dracula Untold, um, Bram Stoker's like all of that. Like Bram Stoker's has always been decent, but I just wasn't that into it until after. I'm going to go into Predator. So that's kind of my like progression of like vampire love because I used to be like the hugest vampire snob. Like you could not get me to like, I'm like, nope, that's not how vampires really are. That's bullshit. <laughs> And like all this vervain bullshit and all that, like I could not get on board with anything like that. But once I read Twilight, I just had to come to a realization that like, you know, I really always liked the underworlds, but even still the underworlds like really weren't acceptable. Those vampires are weak shit compared to the Anne Rice Vampire Chronicles. But 
ultimately, I think that like vampires are actually like the most romantic thing on the planet. You know, I don't love this purple, but I think I'm gonna do it anyways. I think I'm gonna use threshold on the inner corner just because I think it's gonna look cool even though this isn't my favorite color of purple. I'm gonna try to keep it really clean and tight in there. Oh yeah, that's gonna look so good. Holy fuck. That's perfection right there. I just really like a dark inner corner. It's a fucking mood, bitch. I feel like I did talk about this vampire thing like recently because I actually like had somebody on one of my socials say something about, oh, it was when the Twilight and ColourPop collab came out because I was like defending my Twilight love. I have Twilight love shame. Did you guys just see me use my left hand for my right side? Mm. That's perfect. That looks so great. What else? What else can I say? Fucking looks awesome. I was gonna go in with that black and I'm so glad that I used this red to deepen. I feel like these brushes are a little bit stiffer than like the M506. Which means they push color a lot better, but they don't, they're, you have to really back that fucking grip off to get it to get that sweet, sweet, sweet blend that I love, which I'm a lot better at backing my grip off on this side than I am on the other side. There was like a metal show in my in my town on Friday night and it was like a costume party. It was, it was the grotesque and burlesque show. So it was like three or four metal bands and then like a burlesque show on the other side. Well, it was like side by side. It wasn't on the other side. Like you didn't have to leave one to go watch the other. So I heard that it was like a costume party. And so I pulled out the gargoyle palette last minute. I didn't realize that it was a dress up party. And honestly, normally I would never dress up to go to a metal show because I am a pit monger. Like I, there's no point in doing your makeup if you're gonna be in the pit the whole fucking time. So anyway, I went and, and at the last minute I pulled out the gargoyle palette. And so I did my makeup exactly like a gargoyle from the gargoyle palette. And I looked so fucking cute. And I was just gonna stop at the Spirit of Halloween store and get some gargoyle wings. And I put on gray shoes and wore this cute little outfit. And then when I got to the Spirit of Halloween, they didn't have any gargoyle wings. They didn't have any bat wings. They didn't have anything of the sort. And I was so fucking disappointed because my makeup from the gargoyle, gargoyle palette was perfection. So if any of you guys are needing some fucking Halloween ideas, bust out that gargoyle palette and fucking do it up because it looked cute as fuck. So then I went to that metal show with my makeup all done and no fucking costume. It was actually sort of ridiculous, but who gives a fuck? I feel like it lasted decent through the pits too. The pits were actually pretty good for a little tiny ass fucking show with a little tiny ass floor. They got pretty crazy. I kept trying to get them started. Well, I tried to get them started twice and could not get them started, which is rare. Like normally if I start going in a circle, people will go. They weren't having no part of it. The times are changing. People are changing. Like metalheads are changing, right? Like the younger kids, they're not into it. They can get into it, but like, I don't know too. I think it takes a little bit of courage to actually like get in a pit when nobody else is doing it. Like if other people are doing it, it's easy, but like it's, it's even hard for me. You think it ain't fucking hard for me to go in a fucking circle all by myself? It fucking is. So we got some pretty decent pits going and my makeup actually made it pretty good through the pits. Like it stayed on, my matte stayed great. I feel like my shimmer shadow kind of looked a little less perfect than what I care for, but I mean, who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? My makeup wasn't like smeared all over my face. It fucking held on like really good. My fucking eye makeup was holding out better than a lot of people's fucking face makeup was. So good enough for the guys I date. And this looks so pretty. That was, I feel like that was really great color choices. That fucking bright purple on that blend out is fucking awesome. Man, that looks so cute. 
Oh, so anyways, I kept trying to get the piss going and I it was to no avail. And so this like crazy big ass motherfucker, well, he wasn't like, he was like, he looked like a kind of like a lawn gnome. He was like stocky as fuck and like he actually looked like a lawn gnome. Like he wasn't like dressed up like a, a lawn gnome, but his beard was like that shape and shit and he was like a short stocky fuck. But anyways, like he fucking looked at me and he was like drunk, you know what I mean? So he was like, like that and he looked at me and he's like and I was like I was like if you get a circle if you go in a circle I'll follow you any fucking where dude and so I think he might have got the wrong impression about that because he like was starting to like kind of be a little bit overly flirtatious but I'll fucking flirt with the motherfucker to get a pit going <laughs> I don't have no shame in that I am not above that I will fucking flirt my ass off if you'll get the pit going <laughs> Look at that fucking blend, bros. I'm gonna get that. I wanna get that red over the top of this purple right here. I'm gonna go do the under eye. You guys know how much I love a fucking red under eye. So much, it's actually usually really difficult for me to put that outside blender shade if it's gonna be not red. It just looks like strung out and sexy, you know what I mean? I just love a red under eye. so lucky that when I got into makeup it was like modern renaissance. I feel like that's when like makeup color stories actually started like kind of taking a turn. I probably wouldn't have got into makeup if it would have been like what was that one palette the the palette that it was the other palette that Urban Decay did like the bright one. Like that wouldn't have got me into makeup it was really this like dark kind of edgy I mean, there were some other things going on. It was shortly after that that like all those blue palettes came out, but those blue palettes probably wouldn't have caught my attention the way the modern Renaissance and like the Venus palettes. Okay, I'm doing it. Actually, I'm gonna go like this and do this and see. Cause it'll look kind of bruisey. Mmm. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Ooh. That looks amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go in with that lightest purple. I hope this doesn't wreck it. I can't tell which eye is in the camera. I have to like, I feel like this purple is actually pretty light and it's kind of, uh, it really needs to be built. It's kind of hard to build. I might be wrong. I felt like I was kind of losing it on the, up on that top part at first. It doesn't look like that now. You guys know how my, I have an inclination to go overboard whilst blending on the lower lash line. Ready. <clears throat> Damn, this looks really pretty. Fuck. I'm in love with this red. Okay, so my camera, my memory card was full. Whilst I was waiting for all my shit to get erased and downloaded and from today's video, I kind of went through and raised that depth up because it was looking a little droopy poo. It was giving droopy poo. <laughs> I'm so dumb. There is no fucking look that doesn't look 
10 times better with more dimension. Oh my god, that looks so good. I'm so glad my camera fucking did that. I also realized that I frequently use purple on the inner corner. Sorry, I'll switch it up. I didn't realize how many times I've done that recently that you guys haven't seen, but I just saw it and was like, oh no, how boring. I'm just putting on my next glitter primer. I'm gonna kind of get some of this off of here because Bella Beauté Bar shims come on pretty strong. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these shimmer shadow brushes that I love the most and I'm gonna go into Hello Brother and I'm gonna use that as the main color of my lid because it's pretty hollow, like not dead inside, like hollow, like holographic. And I don't wanna take away from it cause I feel like I do that often and I've been doing a lot of dark on the lid lately. I don't know why because it's not my preference. It is not my preference to have a dark lid. I feel like I'm just like, I'm constantly in a state of rebellion even against myself. So like no matter what I actually want, I still am gonna do what I don't want because I'm not even gonna tell myself what to do. So I wanna get this like on most of the highest part of my lid because this color is not what it appears. Like it looks red, but it is actually like this beautiful like red to purple shift. Oh, you can see it bigger than shit and it's holographic. So it's like something to scream about. It's all the rage. And I want it all over my face. And then I'm gonna go into this color Shadows. It has a little bit of a green shift, which I feel like Bella Beauté Bar frequently adds a green shift where there's nobody asked for it, but it has a really cool red shift as well. So I'm gonna go, oh, actually I'm gonna use one of these Blend Bunny. I'm gonna use this Blend Bunny brush and I'm gonna go into shadows and I'm just gonna go, ooh, that was a little, I went a little hard on that. And I'm just gonna kinda, I'm still gonna, ooh. I'm missing. And then I'm just gonna give this a little tappy tap, tap a -roo. Ooh, that is fucking good. And then, okay, so then I'm gonna go on the inner corner and the underside, I'm gonna go with Undead. And I'm gonna use this Blend Bunny brush. Ooh, these brushes are, I mean, they definitely can serve a purpose. Ooh, that's super chunky, I just lost it all on the tap. These shifts are fucking perfection. Mm, mm, mm. Can't get enough of that shit. I am soaked right now. Damn, that's perfection. I'm just gonna kind of go like this. So I want that to be gradient. I don't want it to be like a fucking shutter slammed on it. And then I'm gonna go back into this deep red cause I wanna make sure that this is gonna be deep enough. Dude. <sighs> this shit's getting me hot. I'm gonna just take my little pinky finger Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Okay, that's the look. I'm gonna go finish the rest of my face and I'll be back when I'm done. So this is the manifesto, the piece de resistance. I used uh, Kiss Lashes, my ColourPop Metallic Red, Be My BB. I used my Lime Crime Plushies in Blackberry. I wanted to try something a little more interesting. I tried to use the, I think it's called Oh, it's Minerva, but it was a little too bright. I couldn't pull it off. So I used my boring old 
same old shit that I use every single fucking day because it really matched. And then I used the Unearthly highlighter that came in the Night Terror collection. I'm not sure how many of you guys saw that video, but I literally freaked the fuck out. I, this is my favorite purple highlighter that I've ever used because it actually like works on my skin where it doesn't look weird. Okay, so like Unearthly's purple highlighter doesn't look like casty on me or anything like that. It's not like that. It's more like it looks like it's not actually on my skin. It like kind of looks like it's sitting off my skin because it's so opposite of my skin color. And I just feel like this has a little bit of a pink to it that makes it like be able to work on my skin just a little better. And then I used Crystal in the Incandescent Blush Palette by Unearthly. And I'm not gonna lie, I used this the other day and it wasn't the first time I've ever used it, but it's like a surprise. It's like, it's reddish, but it's got like a pinky fuchsia purple shift. It's super cool and I felt like it really matched this. I almost used Balefire, which I don't even like to say Balefire. It feels a little weird to me. It was a little more orange. It's a little more fiery, obviously. What can I say? This is like my favorite look that I've ever done. <laughs> It looks good even with my hair looking like pure shit and I don't know I guess the way that I measure a good haircut is if it looks like shit and it still looks good so I think I'm working it's working I'm gonna put these earrings in I got all these earrings out of I was at a hot spring the other day and this it's like a hot spring hotel but it's like country bumpkin as fuck it's not like a hot spring hotel like most people are used to where it's like super bouge it's like dirty and fucking filthy and old and shit anyway Anyway, she like just set up shop at like nine o'clock at night and basically like had all these badass earrings for three fucking dollars and I cleaned her the fuck out of all of her skull shit. Like she didn't have, I, I got all of it. Every skull she had, I fucking got it for three bucks. I mean, how could I not? For three dollars? You can't even get a cup of coffee for three dollars. All right, that's the look. I'm in love with it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because you can't wait to see what happens next. Hit the like button if you like this look or if you just like my sparkling personality or boyish charm and hang out with me in the comments because I fucking love it. If you got like halfway through this video and you're like, oh my God, she is so pretty till she opens her big fucking mouth, then go check me out on Instagram. I don't talk as much on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. You could have been anywhere, but you were here wasting your time with me and I totally appreciate you. Later. Slayer!